My name is Justin Gellis. I'm an editor at the New York Times. Uh, I'm responsible for the paper's coverage of uh, food, agriculture, energy, and a handful of other things, to the extent anybody's in charge of anything down there, which is uh, not very. Uh, we are going to talk in, in this panel about uh, a, a pretty colossal problem. We, we uh, need to feed 9 billion people if you're an optimist. I'm sorry, 8, 8 billion people if you're an optimist, 9 or 10 billion if you're not. Uh, by 2050, uh, we need to feed them better than we do today, as we've been hearing uh, this morning. Uh, we uh, therefore need to be able to produce, uh, I think the very rough estimate is about twice as much food as we produce today. We need to do it with less land uh, because of urbanization. Uh, we need to do it with less water, uh, uh, we think. And uh, how are we going to do that? Um, that's what my panel is going to uh, talk to us about. The essential topic here is the environmental sustainability of agriculture. We know that agriculture food production is uh, one of the most important, or the most important thing probably we do on this planet. Uh, it's also one of the most damaging. Whole ecosystems were wiped out before we even had the word ecosystem to uh, create uh, farms and farming systems, and uh, uh, that continues apace, uh, sad to say. Uh, I suspect in this panel, Jeff has done a great job of uh, papering over the ideological differences that are rife in this field to get a lot of people into the same room. Uh, I, you know, it's 2.30 and it's probably time to sort of rip that veil away so, and have some, uh, some real ideological uh, discussion and conflict, so we'll see. I'm going to do very, very brief introductions of my panelists. Their bios are in your packet. You can read them. Uh, let's not waste time sort of going through everybody's bio. On the far end of the table is Sarah Scher, excuse me, Scher. She's with Echo Agriculture Partners down in Washington. Uh, she's uh, going to talk about solutions. We're, I'm going to actually have them speak in the reverse order that you're hearing these introductions. Uh, next to her is Nils Christensen. He's from Nestle, the giant food company. He's also going to talk to some extent about solutions to the problems that the folks on this end will outline. Uh, then I think we have Cheryl Palm, who's an expert on the global nitrogen cycle. A lot of people don't realize that our very bodies, uh, when, we, when we sit down to eat here, we're dependent on uh, uh, nitrogen that's been sort of artificially fixed from the air. Uh, the, the, you know, much of the human population today would not exist if that process had not been invented and put into commercialization in the 1920s. Uh, but there are some downsides to it, as we're going to hear. Uh, next to Cheryl is Cynthia Rosenzweig, who's one of the world's great experts on global warming and is going to talk to us about uh, the problems we face as the planet heats up. <clears throat> Pardon me. And uh, I'm not sure Lester needs any introduction. I'm going to have him speak first. Uh, most of you know who he is. Uh, when Lester started, and I remember many, many years ago, uh, I, I, I hate to tell you I was a relatively young man when I started reading uh, Lester's work, uh, and that guy seemed really out there and sort of on the uh, far edge. Uh, and slowly but surely, most of, if not all, of the things that Lester predicted have uh, come true over the years. Uh, and I think he's come to be seen as uh, not a nut, but a prophet. So let's have, have him speak first <laughs> and, uh, and uh, pull out his crystal ball and tell us where we're heading. <laughs> 